welcome back to our next video so in this video we are going to be working question number one for the cape Cape unit 2 paper 20 paper 2 2021 so the first question it had asked us to define structural isomerism and we know that simply it refers to compounds that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula so that was part question one a part one so for part two now it asks us to identify two types of structural isomers right so it had asked us to identify two types of structural isomers in part two and we should give examples so for structural isomerism we have three types chain positional land functional group so in chain isomerism we are actually rearranging the carbon atoms so for example butane and two methyl pentane two methyl propane so let us draw that So butane, we know that should have four carbon atoms. So since as it is chain isomerism, we must rearrange the carbon atoms. No, rearranging does not mean I am going to just change the shape. So this is not an isomer all right if you notice this carbon all right i'm going to label it carbon b and i'm going to label this carbon a if you notice carbon d and carbon a are attached this is carbon b and this is carbon a all right so even though they appear to be different the connectivity is the same so if you are doing chain chain isomerism the connectivity right so how the atoms are connected must be different which means that when you're if you are joining if you are joining a new compound carbon a and d should not be attached to each other so for that reason judge three carbon atoms and we are going to remove this one so we are going to remove carbon b right we are going to put it on a different carbon atom all right now remember you got to put on your hydrogens of course all right so now we have three carbon atoms here that is how we get our isomer. Well, that is how we get propane in the name. So three carbon atoms, that is propane. And we have a methyl group on carbon two. Hence it is two methyl propane. And in this one, so let us just do it again. One, two, three, four carbon atoms and a straight line that is butane all right so that is our those are our two examples for chain isomerism and if it's an isomer we could not just draw one compound because by definition it has to be at least two compounds all right so that's my answer butane and two meter propane you could also use pentane and two methyl butane and other compounds, just like that. All right, so let us continue. I'll just erase this. All right, so for the next one, for positional isomerism 
we are not going to change the connectivity of the carbon atoms, right? So in this example, what we have is that when we have a special group like a substitute, a substituent group or a functional group. So for example, if we have one chloro, all right, so this is one chloro propane. So for positional isomerism, all we need to do is change the position of the substituent group. All right, so one chloropropane, we just need to switch it. All right. And so we have two chloropropane. That is it. So in positional isomerism, you have a particular group that all you have to do is switch the position of it. So in this example, the chlorine is on carbon one, and in this example, it is on carbon two. But the, comp the amount of carbon atoms must be the same in each compound. All right, so next example, it could have been we could have used an alcohol as well. So you can have one propanol and then we could have switched it. All right, so it don't have to be propanol. Let's add an next carbon atom. So that's two butanol and this would be, let's put it at carbon one. So that would be one butanol. All right, so there you have it. I'm just putting in the names, all right? So that was question one, part A. So we're going to move on now to part B. All right, so for part B, it's calculation, so combustion analysis, all right? So in this question, it says a uh, gaseous hydrocarbon P of volume 10 cm cube. So as you read the question, you should be highlighting some key information. All right, so it says a hydrocarbon P of volume 10 cm cube. All right, so 10 cm cube. So a gaseous hydrocarbon of volume 10 cm cube of formula CXHY was mixed with 70 cm cube of oxygen and exploded in a reaction chamber. So basically they ignite the hydrocarbon, right? So as I said, it's combustion. So after cooling to room temperature, the gaseous mix the gaseous mixture occupied a volume of 55 cm cube now we know that the products of combustion is carbon dioxide and water but in terms of gases that will be present in combustion we are using an excess of oxygen so at the end you will have a mixture of oxygen and co2 now, the purpose of this sodium hydroxide here is to remove the CO2. So it says after shaking with aqueous sodium hydroxide, the volume was reduced to 35 cm cube. Right? The remaining gas was shown to be oxygen. Right? And they are asking us now, so the following equation is used to represent the combustion of P. We were to calculate the molecular formula. So the first thing we need to do is get the volume of CO2 and the actual volume of O2 that 
reacted. All right, so for oxygen, so for volume of oxygen, we know we start out with 75 cm cube, right? Now at the end, we have 55. So we want the, the volume of O2, and we also want CO2. At the end, we have 55 cm cube, which means this is CO2 plus unreacted oxygen. It reduced to 35 cm cube when we add sodium hydroxide. That means the volume of CO2 is the difference between 55 and 35. And that is 20. All right. So at the end of the reaction, or at the, after you add the sodium hydroxide, it was reduced to 35 cm cube. This 35 that is remaining is unreacted oxygen. Right. So the actual volume of oxygen that reacted would have been 35. This should not be 75, it is 70. All right, so we have the, the volume of oxygen that actually reacted. So with a question like this, when I get three different volumes for the reaction, ignoring the one for the hydrocarbon, when you want the volume for oxygen and CO2, you have to do some subtraction. Also, you have to be careful of how you interpret this part here. So when it says, after shaking with aqueous sodium hydroxide, the volume was reduced to 35. It is different. So in our next case, it might say it decreased by 35. If it had said the volume decreased by 35 cm cube, that 35 is actually the, the volume of CO2. All right, so let's make that clear. If it had said the volume decrease by 35, then it was 35 CO2. But it said it decreased to, to 35. All right, so I hope you get that part. If it decreased to 35, you will subtract and you get CO2. If it decreased by 35, then you have 35 CO2. All right, so let's get to the actual calculation. All right, okay, so the, what we are going to do now is below the equation, we are going to write the volume for each of the reactants and CO2. So we know hydrocarbon, the volume was 10. For oxygen, we know it is 35. 35 and CO2, that is 20, all right? And with this, we always divide by the smaller volume. In this case, it's the hydrocarbon, which is 10. All right, so we have one mole of the hydrocarbon, these answers here is the mole of the hydrocarbon. 
And we're going to put these answers now into the equation. So we have one mole. Sorry. So one mole of the hydrocarbon reacted, right? And we get two mole of CO2. So if you get two mole of CO2 and you're using one mole of the hydrocarbon, then the hydrocarbon must contain two carbon atoms. So at this point, we know that X has a value of two, all right? So if X has a value of two right here, that is also two. So what we need to find out now is the answer for, for Y. So what we're going to do here, so trend of O2, right? Trend of O2, that is actually seven oxygen atoms. So remember you have trend of moles of O2. So two oxygen atoms in a molecule of oxygen. So two times trend of, that would give us a total of seven. So if you have seven oxygen atom on this side, you should also have seven oxygen atom on this side. So when we add up the oxygen atoms in CO2 and H2O, we should get a total of seven. Now already, we know that in CO2, we have two moles of CO2. So two times two, from CO2, we have four atoms of oxygen. And the total must be equal to seven because we have seven oxygen atoms on the reactant side. So we should have seven on the product side. That means the mole of water has to be three. That would mean we have three atoms of oxygen. However, they gave you a fraction. So we cannot just put three here. We need to find out what would you divide by two in order to get three. So we know that six divided by two is three. All right. So that's your answer. So Y is six. Now, if you put six here, undo if you work out six over four you will get one and a half so two plus one and a half that is three and a half so two plus six over four is the same as three and a half and here we said y is six, so you put six here. So the molecular formula of compound P is C2H6, all right? That is how we get our answer. If you have any questions, you can put it in the comment section when you watch this video. All right, so that was it for this part of the question. The other parts of the question is contains reaction mechanism. So I will stop this video here and then I'll do a part two when we look at the reaction mechanisms. So this was part A and B, question number one.